You are now tuned in to the network, the YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics and dumbs it down to more simple language. Today's topic is section 2.9 of the CCNA exam. Configure the components of a wireless LAN access for client connectivity using GUI such as wireless LAN creation, security settings, QoS profile, and advanced WLAN settings. It's been a minute since we've done a video. I'm finally back in about a month. Notice the keyword says configure. So that means, guess what? We are gonna get our hands dirty today. In the past couple videos, if I remember correctly, we was doing nothing but theory. I was just reading PowerPoints, y'all. So today, we are actually gonna get our hands dirty. Uh, we're gonna be playing with the wireless controller. I have a live one booted up already. I've got it connected to my 3750 switch. As you can see here, it says here we're going to be playing with the 5500 series wireless controller. If you haven't seen one of those, we're going to log in and I'll show you, you know, a little graphical representation of one. Um, maybe I'll do a whole video of the whole setup of, you know, actually setting up the wireless controller from scratch. But just, just to save you guys some time on this topic, we're just going to log right in with it, with it already set up. I've already got the AP joined to the controller and everything. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is, remember in, in the uh, last video, we talked about different ways to log into a device. We can SSH to it, we can Telnet to it, we can do HTTP, HTTPS. Well, I set up this wireless controller to use HTTPS. In other words, it's a secured browser session to this wireless controller. So in this case, we're gonna type HTTPS colon whack whack and the IP address of the controller, which is 192, I think I've already got it there, 192.168.0.200. Don't know what's going on there, but there it goes right there. Uh, we got our wireless controller, so we click the login button. And again, you can simulate this in Packet Tracer as well. I just like buying hardware because I like to tinker with it and it makes me feel more comfortable and, and less intimidated when I'm in a network closet or actually playing with these devices so we're gonna log in with our credentials which is admin password and now we are logged into the this is the generic dashboard when you log into a 5500 wireless controller this is basically a summary of how many wireless networks we have we got one access point as i mentioned before I've got a 37, I believe, it's a 3700 series AP. I showed you this AP in a couple videos back. That right there, as you can see, has got a green one, meaning no client connected or anything, but it is ready. It's broadcasting an SSID. We're going to go ahead and uh, create a wireless control or a wireless LAN um, and go get with that. There's some rogue APs here, but once you log into this, let's just cut this sweet and short. Once you log into the uh, controller, you're going to get this summary dashboard. We're going to click advanced to get our hands dirty here. And this is how the wireless controller looks like. I don't know if y'all can hear the fans, but it's real loud. I'm in my garage, but it's pretty loud. Uh, you know, once I turn that off, my, my switches are, are quiet compared to this wireless controller here. And as you can see, I have one SFP connection to that. That goes to my switch. And then on the switch, I have another fast ethernet port connected to the AP. Uh, I should console into the AP so y'all can see. Uh, it, well, I showed y'all the boot up process before, but anyways, not really consoled into it, but uh, this is the service port. So this is, this is an RJ45 port. I'm connected to it with my laptop and it's this right here. That's where the service port is. Management IP is when, if we wanted to SSH to it, we would SSH to, uh, actually we would SSH to that address I believe if I'm not mistaken correct me if I'm wrong uh, in the comments below first thing we want to do here uh, it said here that they wanted us to when we go back to the uh, Cisco guideline here the blueprint it says here they want us to configure the components of a wireless LAN access for client connectivity using the GUI only well we're we'll logged into the GUI wireless creation so let's go ahead and create a wireless network here back to the session here what we're gonna do is first thing we're gonna do is we go to WLANs like this and then notice we have one WLAN already, WLAN 10. That's the that's the uh, SSID for it. As you can see, if I actually go to my laptop, 
and look at these uh, networks here, you'll actually see there's WLAN 10. It's already being broadcasted. But we're going to, I'm going to go show you from scratch on how we create another wireless local area network, right? So again, we do WLAN and then we're going to say we could disable, select it. We can select that and disable it. We can enable it. We can remove the selected. Right now, we're just going to create new and then we're going to click go. We could do a guest LAN, a remote LAN, or WLAN. We're going to create a WLAN as they, as they asked us to. We're going to go ahead and click, let's do lobby underscore internet. And then we're going to say lobby underscore internet. That's going to be the SSID. This is the ID. This is what we're going to match our VLAN to. So in this case, we're going to say, let's do VLAN. Let's do ID number 30, right? We're gonna click apply here. First thing you wanna do here is notice that enable is not checked. We're gonna click enable here, right? And just so we don't forget, we're gonna click apply. But actually, let's not do that just yet. Right here, we got our security policies. We'll go over that in the next video under the topic. Section 5.9, describe wireless security principle protocols, WPA, PA2, and PA3. Basically, one's weaker, and then the next one's stronger, and next one's stronger. That's basically what you boil it down to. But, you know, it obviously gets deeper than that. We'll, we'll discuss that next video. Uh, let's see here. We've got some. So we can uh, modify our security policies. As you can see here, it says modify under security tab, which will appear after the applying the changes. So we go to that tab, and we can set it up here, right? So general, we'll go back to the general tab. We can modify our radio policy and broadcast only certain type of uh, protocols. We can do A, G, G, uh, A and G, B and G only. Let's just do all, so we're broadcasting uh, all radio protocols. Let's just go ahead and click apply. It's good to click apply on each tab when you make some changes here, right? So we enabled it now, right? Remember, it, by default, it's not enabled. So we click apply, right? If we go back to WLAN, we'll see both we'll see the new one that we just created right here at the bottom lobby internet and again you could do this on packet tracer it's just that some of these features are not accessible on packet tracer that's why i i just like hardware so anyways we'll go back to uh the wlan we just created right notice here we go to our wireless local area networks we still have wlan 10 but we don't see the lobby internet right why is that? Well, we're not finished creating it yet. So not only that, it took me a minute to figure that out. Uh, we need to add an AP to it and actually add an AP to a group. We're going to have to create a group after this too. So we go to security. Let's, uh, we're going to do, we could do 802.1x, which is, you know, like port security. We could do WPA, WPA2, which is stronger uh, encryptions. We got static wet, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's wireless equivalency protocol, I believe it is, or wireless equivalency privacy. I can't remember, but it's basically a weak encryption. You don't want to do that. That's not really that great either. I can't remember what these two are, but basically you want to stick with WPA and WPA2. For now, we'll just leave none just for the simplicity, meaning we're not going to prompt our users for a password when they log on to this wireless network. Right, so that's the security. We could that was layer two, right? Layer two security. We do MAC filtering, right? If we wanted to. So, in other words, we can allow we can um, allow specific MAC addresses to join our wireless controller. So we can say, okay, if your wireless, if your device, your smartphone, or your your tablet has the MAC address A B C one two three X Y Z. Obviously, you could, it's more different than that. But let's say we. Uh, only allowing specific MAC addresses to join our wireless network. So we can be very granular with our security here. Fast transition, so we could do associate, we could change the association or the disassociation. We'll just leave that by default off. We go to layer three security. We can do web policy, right? Right here it says that the controller will forward DNS traffic to and from Again, on Packet Tracer, I don't believe you'll be able to do any of this stuff. So this is why I like hardware so you can see all of the functions a wireless controller can do. To and from the wireless clients prior to authentication in absence of explicit deny rule for DNS traffic. In pre-auth 
ACL or access control list. I have no access control lists or anything set up here. We're just gonna keep it simple. Notice all of these options here we could do. We could do authentication, pass through, a splash page re web redirect. A splash page, y'all know, like if you join, like say a Starbucks, the Wi-Fi, right? You log in, you try to join it, and then you get like a what's called a captive portal. You know, it'll say, if you log on to this internet, you're hereby agreeing to the fact that, you know, if you get hacked or somebody gets into your laptop or whatever, or you get fraud somehow, you can't blame us and sue us. So if you if you agree to this, please click OK. That's what the splash page is, also known as a, a captive portal. You also got Mac failure on Mac failure filter, ACLs, etc. blah, blah, blah. There's so many functions you can do. You can get really, really, really very granular with your security here. We're not going to get into that. We're just going to keep it simple here, right? We could, uh, we could set up some AAA servers right here. Y'all know what AAA server is, right? Authentication, uh, accounting, and authorization server. Basically, it's a third-party server that keeps all the username and passwords that'll authenticate our users, right? So for example, a, a wireless controller or a switch or a router, right? Normally you could SSH to it, right? And the passwords are stored, the username and passwords are stored on there. And that device will authenticate you. A AAA server is basically a third party. So let's say you try to log on to a switch, right? You put your username, password, network bro, one, two, three, four, five, right? He logs on and the router's gonna be like, oh, you trying to log on to this device, huh? Let me check in with a, the AAA server. It checks in with AAA server and says, hey, network bro, user network bro with the, using, with the password ABC12345 wants to log in. Is that okay? The AAA server is going to say yes or no. If he says yes, he's going to let the router know and then the router is going to be like, oh, okay, you're good. You can get granted access to the network. That's what a AAA server does. We're not going to set up all of that right now. We just keep it as simple. But you could add one, two, three, four, five, six, as you can see here, six servers. You could do LDAP servers. If you don't know what that is, that's like Active Directory and stuff. So, you know, in case one server fails, you fail over to the next and fail over to the next, so on and so forth, right? You can split them up to authentication servers, accounting servers. Accounting checks the logs of the device. User Joe Blow made a change. You can check the accounting server to see what time he made that change. That's what that does. We're not going to get into all that. We just keep it simple. That's what we do here on the Network Bro channel. I'm just explaining all this stuff, stuff to y'all, right? So, QoS. We got the QoS tab here. If we wanted to change that, we can do platinum, gold, silver, bronze. If you don't know what QoS is, QoS is quality of service. So, if you want to prioritize your traffic, right? Let's say you got some critical application that... You if, if the network bottles bottlenecks or slows down or whatever the case may be, we want to make sure all of our traffic gets prioritized for our critical application. I don't care what's going on with the YouTube or Hulu or streaming or video games that these, you know, our employees are, are, are messing with. I need to make sure that this application is up and running 24-7. QoS allows you to do that. There's different ways you can do it, as you can see here. If, let's say we want to prioritize our voice traffic. I don't care what's going on with these applications or these servers or whatever the case may be. I need all my voice and video traffic to be spotless. I don't want no drop calls. I don't want nobody to sound like they're a robot or they're underwater or whatever. That's what QoS allows you to do. You got you know multiple ways to do that. You could do a uh, quality of service with the wireless controller. Nowadays, most, most of the time, they, people set up quality of service through, through their routers. But you have the option to do so on your wireless controller you can there's it's so many like ways you can pretty much shape and and, and 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 police your traffic as you can see here all these options right here none of this is in packet tracer by the way i again this is why i i like the hardware so you can so i can show you all this we're approaching 16 minutes now so let's go ahead and hurry up we can do policy mapping here we got the advanced tab here we can do allow AAA uh, override coverage hole detection. Like let's say for example, you know we got we got a wireless AP that's broadcasting an SSID, right? I'm, I'm talking my head off. Let's 
go back to control. Let's, I'll explain this real quick. We'll move on. So this AP fails. All the AP, all the clients connected to it can shift over to another AP. And that's what coverage hold detection kind of does, right? We got these other options here. I'm not going to go get into that. You can do flex connect. You know what flex connect is? Is basically traffic goes from the client to the AP and then the traffic goes to the wireless controller and back to the AP and then to another user, right? But Flex Connect, let's say the wireless controller is down or whatever, or it fails over to another, you can locally traf uh, switch your traffic. So it doesn't need to contact the wireless controller. It just goes to the AP and it goes to the other, whatever you're trying to contact, uh, another user or you know uh, an, a printer or whatever the case may be. You do all of that. You locally switch your traffic without the without the uh, wireless controller. That's what Flex Connect allows you to do, right? Uh, so move on. Let's go back to our uh, lobby internet that we was creating here. Uh, so we got all those options. We're not gonna set any of that up. I just wanted to explain all of that to y'all. I don't think we set anything. Maybe we'll go back and set a password just to see. But uh, don't think we did anything else. We'll go ahead and click apply. That is going to cause anybody that's connected to this AP lose connectivity for a bit, as y'all see with that warning there. So now that we've created the lobby internet, right? We go back here, check our wireless and local area networks. We still have just WLAN 10, which was the default. We don't see lobby internet yet, right? So what we gotta do is we gotta go, we're gonna go to advanced, right? The drop down box, we're gonna click AP groups and uh, we're gonna do add group. We're gonna create a new group. Let's name it secondary underscore group. It doesn't like spaces. Secondary group or APs, whatever you want to call it. We click add, right? So this group right now, if we go back to monitor real quick, you'll see we got one AP. It's up, right? We go to AP. There's the AP right there, right? The default name. AP7 or AP and then the MAC address, right? He already got an IP address. That's what it was. It was a 3702 router. He's been up for about an hour. Enable. Let's see. If you click him right here, right now, he is in the which group? I don't know where he says which group he's in. There he is right there. Right now, he is in the default group, right? We can move him over to the secondary group right which what's in the secondary group well they don't have any WLANs in the secondary group yet so let's go back to the wireless local area network here uh oh we set it up to be WPA2 I don't want that let's go back and fix that let's go to security we'll do none so that way it does not prompt our users for a password or anything as you can see right here again changing WLAN parameters while it's enabled will cause the WLAN to momentarily be disabled and thus might result in loss of connectivity for some clients. Press OK to continue. Try not to do that in a production environment. It, nine times out of ten is fine because they'll shift over to another AP or whatever the case may be. We go back to our AP groups. Let's go back to secondary group. And right now, we check in here, there's no APs in the secondary group. So nothing's going to be broadcasting the lobby internet. That's why. So what we're going to do here is highlight the only AP that's on here, click add APs. And then as you can see here, changing AP group, will reboot the AP and rejoin the controller after a few minutes. AP 3600 with 802C, 802.11ac module, we're advertised only the first w, a, a WLAN subscribe. Are you sure you want to continue? We're going to click OK. So now if we check the secondary group, we'll see. And uh, we don't have any also, we don't have we we added the AP to the group, but there's no SSID, so we need to add an SSID, right? Right now, we've got what options? WLAN 10 and Lobby Internet. So let's go to Lobby Internet. Uh, that's the interface, the management interface, right? As you can see, let's look. Changing the WLAN interface mapping and AP group will remove the local VLAN mapping for Flex Connect AP. Uh, we're not going to enable that. We're just going to keep it simple. We'll click Add. Right, so now the secondary group has the lobby internet SSID. Let's go ahead and add one more. We're gonna click add new. 
Let's add the WLAN 10. So now, anything in the secondary group, which we've added one AP, which I think is going to be uh, rebooting right about now, should be broadcasting all of those, right? So now if we go here and check, we don't see WLAN 10 anymore, right? Because I believe the AP is in the process of rebooting, right? So now that we've done that, let's make sure, so the secondary group has those two WLANs. We got uh, an AP, AP's currently in this group, none so far because I believe it's being rebooted, right? If we go to monitor, you'll see we don't have any APs, right? It's re being rebooted. So let's go ahead and save configuration. Are you sure you wanna save configuration to flash so that on a reboot, the controller retains the configuration? We're gonna click okay, wait for a bit. I didn't know, I thought this, a, this uh, wireless controller would support more APs, but apparently not, it only supports 12. Uh, okay, so we may have to wait a little bit. Right there, successfully saved all configuration. It may take a bit. I may cut this part out uh, until we see the AP uh, rejoin the controller. Uh, what other? Uh, what else we got here? We got some. We got no rogue uh, rogue APs. We got a couple of traps here. These are probably rogue like APs. My maybe my neighbor or something. Got some, got Wi-Fi, and this just finds, you know, it just finds finds them as, it just detects them as rogue APs. They're not really rogue, they just got their stuff on. So we're gonna click, keep clicking refresh until that AP joins. And while that's joining, um, I meant to tell y'all, this might be uh, the last wireless uh, videos that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do maybe like, I believe the last couple sections of the TCNA exam. We're not going to be doing any more wireless. I kind of lost interest in wireless, to be honest with you. Um, I've, I've, I've grown a, a little interest in some security. So what I'm going to do is cover some of the security sections or topics in the CCNA exam. We'll go, go over some basic security stuff, maybe some port security. I got an ASA firewall. We'll probably go over that. Uh, we'll probably play with some packet tracer labs and uh, security. So we're going to cover some basic stuff in security some security topics because I've grown a bit of an interest in it so uh, again we're just gonna you know and another thing was yeah I, I since COVID-19 hit the wireless remediation project at my job got put on hold and it just got put to the wayside and that's another reason why I was just like well I'm, I'm not gonna do any more wireless stuff I, I, I'd rather I'd rather look into some security so uh, shout out to uh, Kelvin Wiz Network Wiz Kid. Uh, he point he gave me some pointers on what to uh, what to do to you know go over to some security topics. Uh, he just got his I believe his CCNP security. And uh, shout out to him if y'all don't know who he is. Check out his channel. I'll put a link in the description below. Great uh, YouTuber. Uh, have we? got an AP to join yet not yet it takes a while for these APs to join I'm definitely gonna cut this off this part off here okay so we've got here the AP is green right now it was flashing red for a moment there so it looks like it's in the process of joining the uh, the controller as soon as it stays solid green I believe that's how we know we are good to go we go back to monitor. There it is right there. It says up, right? Let's check access points. And there he is right there. He's up. Low profile pass, pass, pass. What else can we check? Let's go to, let's go to, uh, let's go to wireless and actually check him out. We've got, he's got an IP address. There's a model, a MAC address. He's been up for four minutes, admin status enabled we actually look at the ap here you'll see default location what group did he say he was in now secondary group remember it was in the default group we changed them so we have the option to change them here or we can change them under the um i believe it was under groups so we go to wireless lands advanced ap groups go to secondary group and then we go to ap's and then we had a list of APs here. We can add APs to this group. You just have to make sure you remove it from another group 
put them in this group or whatever the case may be but uh, as you can see here it's solid green so that means we should be broadcasting our SSIDs we check here and uh, there he is right there lobby internet WLAN so let's go ahead and see if we could join the lobby internet but I'm gonna do it um, not with this guy let's go ahead and join it with another device here I have a smartphone but I want to keep that to to y'all uh, I also have just a little you know small little laptop mini laptop we'll go ahead and try to join the uh, lobby internet there actually let's just do it on here so y'all can see we click connect connecting normally if we were to put it on WPA or WPA2 boom it should uh, it should prompt us for a username and password if we you know we set that up but uh, we did not do that so right now we are connecting in the process of connecting still and as you can see here we got a blue light which means a user has connected to the AP right so we go to lobby internet says no internet open so it doesn't allow us to get on the internet because obviously this is a local network that we created a WLAN so now if we go to uh, monitor and we can check for clients and there is the client right there let's do this CMD just to verify and then IP config slash all and the Wi-Fi engine CCB zero so yeah that's this laptop right here that's connected to it so basically we got a, a we got one client there just to be sure so we got one client right there right we'll connect the other device we'll use my cell phone smartphone and try to access it right here right so I'm gonna turn on my Wi-Fi on my cell phone Wi-Fi lobby internet connected so now if I click refresh I got two clients there that's my cell phone so we go all the clients that's my laptop and that's my cell phone right there and again as you can see we got WLAN and uh, where is he at lobby internet right there that is all I got for y'all today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I've kind of probably rambled off there, but uh, that is my YouTube page. That is my Twitter handle. If you like this video, please hit the uh, like button. Leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what I could do to improve my channel. Again, we're just going to cover maybe two or three more sections, which is uh, the wireless section of the CCNA exam. And that's pretty much it. Again, as you can see here, I got a blue light, which means clients are connected to it. When it's green, that means it's up and ready to go, but we ain't got no clients. So we're good to go there. For now, please comment, like, subscribe to the network.